You know, I used to wear blood around my neck when I was married to Billy Bob Thornton. Notice I got rid of his tattoo and replaced it with my children's names in Sanskrit. So I've been accused of being different, almost witch-like, if you will. And on a night like this, witches are getting a really bad rap. Tim Estilos takes us to Salem to set the record straight. Good witches, bad witches, wicked witches. For thousands of years, witches have conjured all kinds of frightening spells, including right here in Salem, Massachusetts. But witches have also held movie audiences spellbound for decades. So on Halloween, we thought it was only natural to come here to Salem and talk to a couple of real-life witches and get their creepy critique on how they've been portrayed on the silver screen. Be gone before somebody drops the house on you, you. Very well. I'll bide my time. And as for you, my fine lady, I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog, too. <laughs> this is how witches are usually portrayed on the silver screen. Sometimes very green, most times very mean. But some real life witches say they don't mind how Hollywood portrays them on screen. After all, any publicity can be good publicity. These movies about witchcraft, movies like Snow White, Bell Book and Candle, Practical Magic, these are the movies that shaped witchcraft. In fact, I believe at one point there was a store in town called Practical Magic. All right, ladies, pick a broom, form a circle. There's a scene in Practical Magic that is real witchcraft. When all the neighborhood women come with their brooms and go to save the save a possessed woman, witches joined together for good, because witches really are good. Just the ashes, dust to dust. I wonder if that would work on my ex-husband. will never come off as long as you're alive. The Wizard of Oz witch is one of the most controversial characters in this town today. Some shops and some witches' balls in Salem won't even let the green face switch appear. That's why I, during the parade, painted my face green. Now, my beauty, something with poison in it, I think. With poison. But attractive to the eye and soothing to the smell. <laughs> Sorry! Sorry! Oh, relax, it's only magic. That movie in itself talks about what happens when power runs a little too rampant. Balance comes and takes care of it. But not all witches fight each other. Most belong to a strong sisterhood that could even tame Jack Nicholson. Girls! Girls! What are you doing? I loved the movie Witches of Eastwick because it showed the power of a woman. It showed the power of beauty. It showed the power of what three women can do to one man. In 1958's Bell Book and Candle, Kim Novak was a sexy witch determined to win Jimmy Stewart's heart by casting a spell. Bell Book and Candle's main topic was about love and whether a witch can fall in love at all. Um, sadly, I, I, I wonder if that's true. So many of our people are, are lonely. Why don't you give me something for Christmas pie? Hmm, what would I like? I'd like to do something different. I'd like to meet someone different. When a witch does find a mate, she does give up a little bit of her own power. It's true, that old wives' tale. It's true. That's why Pie Wacket ran away. You've lost your power. I've fallen in love. But not all movie witches love to love. Others love to be just plain evil. Give him fur black as black, just like this. I 
I believe some witches are evil and devilish. There's nothing wrong with being wicked. Now, as frightening as some witches may appear to be, both in real life and on the silver screen, the truth is there are far more frightening things to be afraid of when the sun goes down. <laughs> <laughs> Ha 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 ha!